hard rubber mouthpiece or metal mouthpiece on an alto sax? Which is the way to go? Well, it's a good question. Today, I'm going to be checking out the Brancher mouthpieces. I've got the L21 hard rubber. I've got the J21 metal mouthpiece from Brancher. I'm going to be popping them on my alto sax and checking them out and letting you know what they sound like. <laughs> G'day everybody, Nigel here from Sax School. I'm really looking forward to today's video because I've actually had these two mouthpieces sat in my studio for a couple of weeks, but then Christmas happened. I kind of got distracted. I've been hanging out doing fun stuff with family like we should do over Christmas. It's January as I'm filming this and I'm getting back into my practice. January is a great time on saxophone to get things reassessed. Think about what you're trying to achieve. So I like to think about what my goals are for the year. Also think about my practicing and try some new things that are gonna stretch me on saxophone. In fact, in sax school, just this month in January, I've launched a new Ear Training 101 course, which is all about that. And if you're not a sax school member, then I definitely suggest popping over to sax school. You can get a 30 day trial at mcgillmusic.com and get access to that mini course and loads of other courses and hundreds of other lessons too. But this ear training course is really good because It'll help you to develop that link between your ears and your fingers, and uh, which is essential when it comes to improvising. Anyway, let's get on to the video today. So, my mate Tim over at Woodwind and Reed, a fantastic company here in England, and they've got a really good, I've been buying reeds from them for years at Reeds Direct, but they've got a really good selection of mouthpieces as well. And I was talking to him about mouthpieces the other day, and he said, Nigel, you gotta check out Brancher mouthpieces. Now I know loads of famous people play branch and mouthpieces, Eric Marienthal, Mindy Abair, um, who else, Benny Golson, Nelson Rangel, Pee Wee Ellis. Loads of these guys play branch and mouthpieces. I've never checked them out. So I've got him to send me up two, the hard rubber. These are both the jazz ones, right? So the hard rubber L21 and the J21 metal, which is a gold plated one. Now, if you've been watching any of my videos, you'll know that I play Theo 1A mouthpieces. On my Alto, my main one at the moment is the Gaia. It's a size eight hard rubber. Um, and I'm playing on Leger reeds. I've got a size two and a quarter on there at the moment, actually. And I like this mouthpiece because it's very versatile. But that's what that's something I'm always looking for in a mouthpiece. It's something that's going to be versatile and work in a few different situations. So let's check these mouthpieces out. So I'm going to start with the hard rubber. I love the box that it comes in. First of all, I love the way that these mouthpieces come with the brancher ligature. It's kind of similar to the Rovner ligature. You know, it's like a what is that made from? It's kind of like a fabric-y sort of thing, a bit like the Rovner, but I don't know if you can see that though, it's got a little metal plate inside. Now, whenever you're checking out new mouthpieces on your saxophone, it's really important that you spend plenty of time working on your intonation and working on your tone. Uh, in fact, I made a great video on the YouTube channel here called One Thing to Practice on Saxophone. You should I'll put a link for you up here. Uh, definitely check that one out because it's good to get a good strategy on how to work on developing that concept of sound. Whenever you change a mouthpiece, it's gonna take a few weeks, I think it can even take a couple of months to really get used to a new mouthpiece and the way it performs. I've been playing on these for a couple of hours now, and it's really interesting. I've talked before about hard rubber versus metal. A lot of people think hard rubber mouthpieces are gonna sound darker, metal they're gonna be really, really bright. It's not always the case, and I think these two mouthpieces are a really good example of the fact that that isn't the way it always is. This actually isn't that bright for a metal mouthpiece. This is quite bright for a hard rubber mouthpiece. And the difference mainly between the two that I can see is the amount of projection that you can get out of them. That being said, this um, metal mouthpiece actually, although it's got a projection to it, it's not shrill, which is a problem a lot of alto metal mouthpieces have. It's gonna be difficult for you to hear the difference, I think, on the video and one of the issues I think when you're listening to review videos of mouthpieces is a lot of the time you're listening to the player, you're not listening to the actual mouthpiece. So I'm gonna play something really, really simple and see if we can, you know, that way you can listen to the tone more. I'll start with the hard rubber. Now, I've got, um, le, I've always played Leger reads in all my mouthpieces now. I'm playing a Leger size two and a half on all of these. So I'll start with this. So we're talking about the brancher, L21 with the Leger size two and a half read on it. Thank you. 
nice warmness to it and um, it doesn't have a lot of projection but still it's got quite a big sound and actually quite focused for a hard rubber mouthpiece. You haven't got that sort of dullness that you get out of a, out of a classical mouthpiece when you're trying to play in a, a jazz style. So it does actually have a really lovely sound and I reckon this would be brilliant in a saxophone section if you're doing big band work, concert band playing, that kind of thing as well, and small jazz ensemble. <laughs> Yeah, the altissimo pops out quite well on this. For me, it's a smaller chamber than I'm used to. It feels a bit kind of closed off in my mouth. So it would take me a little while to get used to this mouthpiece, I think. But from first impressions, it really does sound nice. Yeah, I think that's the main thing for me. It's got quite a closed sort of focused sound, which isn't what I expected. As a comparison, have a listen to this Theo 1A Gaia, which is my main mouthpiece, the Gaia 2. And the difficulty, of course, is that I've been playing on this mouthpiece, the Gaia 2, for ages, so I'm really comfortable with it. But it's a Theo 1A Gaia 2, and it's got a two and a half Leger reed. <laughs> Straight away for me, it's got a bigger, a bigger, it feels like a bigger chamber in size. It feels more open and free blowing and it allows me to be a bit more expressive with it. That's what I love about this mouthpiece and uh, sort of as a compromise possibly between these two. Okay, so let's try the branch of J21, the metal gold plated mouthpiece. Now, actually, it's funny, I played metal mouthpieces for years on my Alto and then Last couple of years, swap, swap back to a hard rubber mouthpiece. I'm a really big fan of it. But putting on this mouthpiece and playing it for a while reminded me of how much I love a good metal mouthpiece on an alto. I love the openness of this mouthpiece. It, it feels really free blowing and it's got a lovely clear sound to it. It's not really, it's not shrill, it hasn't got loads of projection, but it's got a warmth to the sound and it makes it very, very easy to play. And I imagine this mouthpiece would actually be, if I was choosing a mouthpiece of these two, I would probably go for this one. You know, and the reason is it's got this ability to play quietly as well as getting some projection and playing loud without being like a laser beam. Yeah, I really like this. It's quite surprising actually how well you can play in a low volume with this mouthpiece and still have a good, free, clear sound over the whole range. The altissimo pops out well as well. <laughs> I reckon this would be a great mouthpiece in a pop or a commercial setting as well. So those are the branch of mouthpieces, the branch of J21, was it the J21 metal and the L21 hard rubber. Now here's an interesting thing about these mouthpieces. The hard rubber mouthpiece, this one's about 210 pounds. 
Uh, in England or in US dollars, it's about 280 US dollars. The metal mouthpiece is about uh, 240 pounds, around about there, which is about 320 US dollars. Okay, so 240, about 210. Now that's really interesting because that's actually, I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money compared to lots of other mouthpieces out there. So I reckon for the price, you're getting something that's pretty awesome. As a comparison, this mouthpiece that I'm playing on, the Theo1A Gaia 2, retails around about like 420 pounds. So almost twice as much as this one. Now I still like the sound of this, and I think it's a good sort of compromise of, of everything that I've played today. But for the, for the money, I think this brancher is actually pretty cool. My choice would be the metal one, but if you were doing lots of concert band playing or playing in a sax section, like in a big band, uh, you know, this would be a good choice as well. I think they're brilliant mouthpieces. So thanks very much to Tim from Woodwind & Reed for sending these over to me. It's really opened my eyes and I tell you what, when I finish this video, I'm going to do some more playing on these because I think they're brilliant. I've got some um, soprano mouthpieces I'm going to be testing in a few weeks as well, so keep an eye out for that video, and that's going to be super exciting because we'll be looking at the comparison between a hard rubber brancher and a metal brancher, but on the soprano. I think choosing a mouthpiece on the soprano can be quite tricky, so that's going to be a good test. Now, don't forget too, there's the, a lot of other videos on my channel here that are going to help you with your tone development and your practice techniques. And if you're changing mouthpieces, then it's so important that you really spend some time looking at your intonation and looking at the way you're practicing your tone. So check out the other videos. If it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel because that way you'll get updated of all the new videos that are coming out all the time. And also don't forget to check out Woodwind and Reed. I'll put a link below. And if you really want to get started with your saxophone, check out saxschoolmcgillmusic.com. There's a 30-day trial you can get started there. There's hundreds of videos to keep you busy. I'm going to do some more playing. I'll catch you next time.